Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm back to finish up our little pumpkin, pretty pumpkins that um, Renee Mullins designed. So all you're going to need for this video is I used a gold leafing pen, which I love. Thank you, Tracy Moreau. She does this quite a bit on her uh, make and takes and all that stuff. And all it does is it puts a nice little edge on the piece so it looks finished. So we're going to need that. I'm going to use a Pigma pen, which Renee recommended a .005, I think. I didn't have that. Oh, where the heck is it? Here. .005 black micron pen. This is a .01, and it, it did the job for me. Um, we're just going to put any detail lines that you want to put, a little outline and all that stuff. But the first thing I want to do is uh, varnish, because that way um, the piece is sealed, and you can wipe off the ink if you do it quick, you know, right away. Once it, it, once it um, cures, it's on there for good. Um, so I'm going to use this um, Dura Clear Matte Varnish. I got this at Michael's. It's by Deco Art Americana. I like a matte. It still has a sheen to it. So you can see that in the camera. Compared to nothing. Um, put a little bit out on a plate here. I don't need much. I'm going to use this uh, Short Touch Oval Wash Brush. These are really good for base coating and varnishing. Um, guys, my I'm forgetting everyone's names, but I can picture their faces. Uh, Elizabeth Stahl, her name is. She recommended this one. I still can't remember the name of the young lady who did this. Um, yeah, I gotta clean those too. Anywho, so I'm just gonna pick this up, and when I load my brush with the varnish, just like paint, no water though. I just went straight into the varnish. And then I'm just going to do clean strokes. Like I just want to keep it from being bumpy and lumpy. I'm pulling off the edge, just like when I base coat. And that's it. I think I'm just going to do one coat. And if this, you know, I mean, I don't even know if anything's going to happen with this, but you could, it's probably best to do two coats. So maybe I'm going to come back after I've done two coats, but you need to let it dry in between coats. Um, I'm going to, I'll just read you what the bottle says, just for, um, shake gently, apply with a flat brush and allow to dry to the touch before adding additional coats. All right. It's water-based, it's permanent. Um, so I just want that to dry to the touch and then I can apply another coat. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll just grab my my uh, heat gun and I'll be right back. All right, I did a second coat and it's all dry. I did mean to mention though, before you varnish, you should erase to the best of your ability or just fix anything. Make sure you're done because then you're going to varnish it. I mean, I could still put, I'm obviously going to do lines on here with my Pigma pen, but I think I highlighted the nose. That was the only thing I didn't do in the other video that I forgot to do. So I did that before I varnished. The next thing I want to do is use this um, gold leafing pen. And I love this. It's just something satisfying about it, <laughs> um, depending on your substrate. Now, if you're painting this on a bag or whatever, I mean, you don't, obviously, you won't have a need for it. But for me, especially the pins, but this is, um, it just gives it that finished edge. And even if you got orange paint on the side or something, this would cover it right up and just makes it look so much more finished, no professional. And I am, I am just probably giving these away, but if I were selling them, especially at a craft fair, see like there's a little orange on the side there see and then I'm going to cover that up it, it just looks so much more professional and I like how it kind of I push really hard as I say I'm a heavy hand but it kind of comes up over the edge too so I get that little glisten I love glitter and gold and all that good stuff so it's just a bonus for me and voila and this will dry 
and you'll be good to go. Look, yes, yeah, see? Oh my God, I love it. It makes me so happy. Okay, then the final step, and you do get it, you can get it on your hand, and I don't really want to smudge it, so I'm just going to make sure I'm gentle when I'm doing this, but you could give it time to dry. So, like I said, I'm using a, an O1, which it's a pretty fine line. It's not super, um, I'll come in. And I'm just going to make, let's, let's just outline. I'm going by, this is the tracing over here. So I'm going to go, this is the one I just did. And see how different it looks? I mean, because I drew it myself too, which is kind of fun. All right, let's do these teeth. It just helps them show up a little better. I'm going to outline the whites of the eyes. You know, you could give them eyelashes if you want. Like I want to add a line there a little. Um, he has these like expression lines over here, you see? They're little like, I like it. And I'm just kind of doing them like that, like little wrinkles. So cute. I mean, you can do whatever you want. She has these little X's and hash marks that she does. And that's basically it. I mean, he could have a furrow in his brow. You know, you could do whatever you want. And then on the one that's her sample, see, I did get a little gold over here. Let me just grab a, a Q-tip and see if I can even get that off. Because the piece is varnished, yeah, you, if you get it quickly enough, you can um, get it off. All right, I'm just saying. And I mean, because I'm filming, I'm doing it quickly, but you can take your time and do this. Make sure things are dry. Make sure, you know, stuff like that. So now I'm just going to go along the edge and just make a little kind of squiggly line. I'm putting a little couple hash marks too. I don't know why. It's just, ooh, itchy nose. It's just fun. And then I did this little jagged line at the top. I don't know why. I just wanted to. And I didn't really do much with the um, stem because I'm going to tie. And I, she didn't have a tie, but I just thought it would be cute. Now, this is. A thicker kind of I don't know if it's called rat this isn't raffia it's like jute twine I guess but I only had like a loose piece of it it's down in my macrame stuff and I didn't want to dig it out then I found this this is called naturally polished hemp cord um, so I'm just going to use this because it's I have enough of it and I think it looks cute I did this one with that it's just a little thinner so it's six of one my mom would say anyway let me just grab a piece and before I like tie it all down I put a little piece of glue under it to just so that it would stay but I tie my knot first because it's very it's like wiry it has a mind of its own and then I kind of slip it slip it over and then pull it but before I really pull it tight I'm gonna find my glue and this is just um, weld bond, what I use for, because it's basically like fabric or paper. You could use ribbon, and I have really thin ribbon that I could dig out, but this looks kind of rustic, and I don't even know if I'm hitting it on the, and then just tie a bow, which I know people are much better at tying bows than me because mine never goes straight. Look, it's completely sideways. But I'm going to try and pull it and then pull these and make it smaller. Okay. Don't forget to sign the back. Put your name. Put the date. And that's it. I don't know. I think it's just... Bows are just not my jam, and especially this little stuff is so weird why it won't cooperate. Let me sign my name. Yep, 
you can use a sharpie and I have these little magnets that I've been gluing on the back and I just again I just used my weld bond and I put two and now you have a little magnet all right you guys I hope you enjoyed this I'll put the link in the description for you to go over to plumperdy.com and download your free Purdy Pumpkins pattern. All right, you guys? That's it. Thanks for watching.